Hello there and welcome to this quick start video. In this quick start video, we're going to record audio into our digital audio workstation. This video will cover tips for Cubase Elements 9, Cubase AI 9 and Cubase LE 9. If you need a hand getting your whole system set up, please go back and watch the video on how to configure your system for a digital audio workstation. Let's get started. The main aim of this video is to record some audio over the top of what we already have. So I'm hitting the plus button and I'm hitting add audio track. I want to record a microphone track and that is only a mono track. Now you could go and browse through some presets to find something that is suitable to the voice that you want to record. But for demonstration purposes, I want to show you how to set your own track up. If you want to go with a preset, just find the preset and hit the add track button. For now, I'm going back and I'm hitting the browse button and I'm adding a blank audio track. The first thing we need to do is make sure we've got our routing set correctly. If you can't see the inputs, just click on the track name tab and then make sure you've got the right input. Now that's the input that your microphone is plugged into on your hardware. This track kicks in at the start of the project. So I want to give myself some leeway to mentally prepare for it. So I'm going down to the metronome setup and I'm clicking on the pre-roll. Just below the pre-roll, I can say how many bars I want Cubase to give me before it starts playing and recording the project. Next up, it's time to do a sound check. I need to make sure that the record enable button is on. That's the big red button on the track. And also I need to make sure the orange monitor button is pressed. And that'll mean I can hear what I'm recording. One, two, and I'm just getting a level on my audio hardware device. If these two buttons aren't pressed, I won't be able to record on the channel and I won't be able to hear what I'm recording. Now it's time to record the vocals. I've hit record and I've got these two bars of pre-count. And then the track kicks in and I'm on my way to recording the vocals. I've got the cycle set down in the transport bar. And that means when I get to the end of this musical phrase, Cubase will return it to the beginning like this and I can start doing another take which is really handy because I can take my time to get into the flow of recording on this particular track. You don't want to really hear me record this over and over again so let's shorten it and let's see what I've come up with at the end of the recording. There's four really quick takes of this really short musical idea and we can play it back by hitting the play button in the transport window. If you can't hear any sound, make sure that your orange monitor button is turned off for playback. We can quickly raise the gain of what we've just recorded by highlighting it and clicking on the handle in the top middle of the event. The handle in the middle bottom of the event, if we've been cycle recording, will let us switch or flip in between different takes. That's really cool because it means we can access each of these takes that we've recorded in this looped record session very quickly. I can expand the track by clicking on the bottom line in the track list. Now I'm getting my scissors tool and I'm chopping this event into small musical phrases. When I'm finished chopping them up, I'll go back and get my arrow tool and now each of these new events will have a handle in the middle at the bottom and I can go and change each small musical phrase in between the different takes that I did. That is pretty awesome because it means I can quickly compile or comp a series of vocal takes into one large long vocal take for a verse or a chorus. We can tidy this recording up even further by grabbing the range selector tool out of the toolbox and highlighting areas where there's no audio information. Then we can hit the delete button on our computer keyboard to get rid of that area. Now this might be breath marks or it might be background noise, but it makes it really easy to make sure that you've only got the data that you want. We can also easily put fade ins and fade outs on individual audio events by grabbing the arrow tool and clicking on the tabs in the top left and right hand corner and dragging them in and out. This is also really important because it means that we don't have any clicks and pops in between audio segments on a particular track. You can access the audio editor by double clicking on any one of the events and down below you can see the audio information and make further edits and you can also see all of the takes you did as regions over on the right hand side. Let's go and add another audio track. I'm using the plus button to add an audio track and this time I want to record a very simple acoustic guitar. You can go and find a preset that will work for you but for now let's leave presets for the mixing video which will be the last video in this series. 
I'm naming the track. I'm selecting mono because I'm just using one microphone on my acoustic guitar track. Now it's time to make sure my guitar's in tune. There's a tuner insert, which is a plugin that I can insert over the top of this channel. Once it loads up, I simply pluck a string on my guitar and the aim is to try and get that light into the center of my tuner. Once I've followed that same tuning process for all of the strings on the instrument that I'm recording, it's time to make sure that the level is correct. Now I've placed a microphone just in front of the sound hole on the guitar and I'm using the volume or the gain knob on my UR22 Mark II, which is my hardware, to make sure that the level is right. Once again, I need to make sure my monitor button is hit and my record enable button. And I've got two bars pre-count to start playing this acoustic guitar track. I won't bore you with loads of playing, so once again, let's skip to the end of the looped recording. Once we've finished recording, we can use the playback to go back and listen to what we've played. We can also, again, go and click on that tab in the middle of the event at the bottom and switch in between different takes to find the take that we like the best. In the next video, we're going to look at some basic mixing concepts and techniques to get your music out into the world. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. Please have a look around our YouTube channel, subscribe to it, and also hit us up on social media. I'll catch you in the next video.